thoroughbreds. Beautiful, strong, glistening horses, they run their hearts out thundering around the track on long, delicate legs. They're little missiles, these horses, and, and they're fragile, and they have huge hearts, and when you get all that together, it's exciting. Seventh race, number nine, 10 to win. Long known as the sport of kings, every year billions of dollars are wagered on thoroughbred racing. <laughs> the biggest gamble might be taken by those who spend big money to own and race thoroughbreds. We're in a luxury item sport. There is no mistake. You have to have some discretionary income to play in the horse business. People say, oh, that horse only brought a half a million dollars. And you go, half a million dollars? That's a lot of money. Or that one brought four million, only four million. I mean, we're talking about serious cash here. It's a rarefied world reserved for owners with a passion for business and pleasure. It's nice to have fun while you're earning a few shekels. <laughs> you cannot buy what horse racing gives you. And it's one of the unique things. It ain't the man with the most money that wins races. It's the man with the fastest horse. The ultimate finish line is at Churchill Downs. The Kentucky Derby is the holy grail of thoroughbred racing. There are races that are worth more money, but none is more treasured. One owner who has made it to the Derby's winner circle twice is Bob Lewis. Bob and his wife Beverly made their fortune with a beer distributorship. They found fame with Derby winners, Silver Charm and Charismatic. To have won the Kentucky Derby once was unbelievable. And then to find ourselves going back and winning it again is just, uh, and, and it only stimulates you even more could we do it a third time? <laughs> yeah. I don't mean to be greedy now, but uh, <laughs> it would certainly be nice. <laughs> but money can't buy a win at the Kentucky Derby. His Royal Highness Ahmed bin Salman is a Saudi prince, a respected player on the American thoroughbred scene since the late 70s. While the prince is worth billions of dollars, for him, there is more at stake than money. It's passion first, and I'm addicted to the thoroughbred business. I cannot get out of it. I mean, it's, it's addiction. There is no hospital in this world will cure me from it. Every move Prince Salman makes is calculated to do something no other Saudi has done, win the Kentucky Derby. In 2001, his thoroughbred point given took the Preakness and Belmont Stakes, two legs of the Triple Crown, but came in a disappointing fifth at the Derby. I was depressed, I was upset. But when he won the Preakness, I had tears in my eyes. I actually had tears in my eyes. So I want to win it, and I'm gonna fight until I get it one day, you know? Maybe in 20 years, I don't know. In his quest for the elusive Derby win, Prince Salman turns to a winning trainer, one who has become a legend on the track, Bob Baffert. Bob Baffert has been the most successful thoroughbred trainer for five years running. In 2001, horses he trained won more than $14 million. But it's his two Kentucky Derby wins that elevated him to celebrity status. The Derby and the classics, you know, the Preakness and the Belmont, they've become so important as it's, it's a, an event. Like the Indy 500, the Super Bowl, the Derby, all these, all these things are a big event. So if you can, you know, it's almost owning a horse, like owning your own franchise team. But it's you, it's your horse. What is that winner's circle like? Probably the best part when you win a race is when you win and you start making your walk down towards that horse. The excitement, you're floating down there. I remember when I won my first Kentucky Derby in 1997 with Silver Charm. I couldn't remember getting down to the track. When I won it the second time, I didn't think I'd feel that again. Usually you get used to winning these races, but, but the second time I won it, I felt the same thing. Thoroughbreds, explain what is special about a thoroughbred. I've had arguments with people, they say, well, it's not a sport, it's just a bet. But it's not because they have to train like any other athlete. They really enjoy it, you can really tell the competition. And when they start winning, they really, you can tell that they really enjoy it. Their whole attitude changes. Amber Sky going away, King Labu was second, and our colors finish third. Of all 
the thoroughbreds Bob Baffert trains, there is one star, Point Given. After rebounding from the puzzling loss at the Kentucky Derby, Point Given racked up wins totaling more than $13 million. Besides being faster, the stallion is bigger than most on the track. He's so big, I call him the big red train. He just gallops him into the ground. He's just, his huge stride is just like, the other horses are like taking two strides to his one stride. In its prime, a thoroughbred like Point Given can be worth millions. No more carrots, sweetie. <laughs> and in a career, they can yield hundreds of millions. But how do you make a horse that makes the money? The first gamble in horse racing is at the breeding farms in the bluegrass hills of Kentucky. This is where the most famous names in thoroughbred racing come from and where they go as studs when their racing careers are over. A winning thoroughbred can bring in more money breeding than they ever won on the track. An average stud fee is about $20,000, a fee they might earn 80 times a year. But for a true champion, the price will skyrocket. Seattle Slough, the only living Triple Crown winner, lives a good life at Three Chimneys Farm. The stud fee for this superstar is $300,000. Claiborne Farms is one of the most famous breeding farms in Kentucky. At Claiborne, the 100-year-old breeding shed is busy five months of the year. We're trying to raise racehorses here. We're raising athletes. So that's what we're all about. While it's true that there is no such thing as a sure bet, nothing about the thoroughbred business is haphazard. It's an art. It's a little bit science, it's a little bit luck, it's a whole lot of hard work and a whole lot of study. The old cliche in the horse business is, you breed the best to the best and you hope for the best. Mares give birth to a foal after an 11 month pregnancy. During a busy breeding season, Claiborne will see 200 foals a year. There's nights we have three, four foals born, maybe some nights even five foals are born. Every birth is a dramatic and breathtaking event. Just minutes old, the newborn struggles to stand. No one knows if the first few shaky steps of this foal might turn into the long, powerful strides of the next Triple Crown winner. <laughs> 